Industrial and infrastructure development projects benefit communities and create economic opportunities for current and future generations. To ensure that such projects are also environmentally sustainable before authorizing them, most countries use Environmental Impact Assessment, or in short, EIA. Making EIA transboundary benefits people and nature beyond national borders. Under general international law, all countries must undertake an EIA of their planned activities that risk significantly damaging the environment of other countries. In line with the precautionary approach and the principle of prevention, this must be done early on in the planning process. The leading international agreement that governs transboundary EIA procedures is the Convention on Environmental Impact Assessment in the Transboundary Context, also called the ESPO Convention. Adopted in 1991 and in force since 1997, the Convention has parties in the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe region, including the European Union. The Convention is being opened for accession to all United Nations member states. The ESPO Convention applies to proposed activities that are likely to cause significant adverse transboundary environmental impact in such diverse fields as energy, transport, industry, mining, waste management, water management, agriculture and forestry. Common examples include power plants and cross-border infrastructure projects. Aside from protecting the environment, the Convention has helped countries improve their environmental governance through enhanced transparency in consultation of authorities and the public in planning and decision-making. Better informed and better accepted decisions have helped avoid costly mistakes. Countries have benefited from strengthened international cooperation on environmental assessment, which, in turn, has helped prevent later misunderstandings and potential disputes. The ESPO Convention offers a framework and procedures for countries that are contracting parties to discuss their planned activities and to address likely environmental damage before it occurs. The Convention guides the countries through the key stages of the Transboundary EIA. A country that plans an activity listed in Appendix 1 of the Convention, say, to construct a motorway, a thermal or nuclear power plant, or a large dam, must first determine if transboundary assessment is needed, and if that is the case, it must notify as early as possible the affected country or countries of the project. The affected country indicates whether it wishes to participate in the assessment. If it does, the two countries will exchange relevant information. Their public are provided equivalent opportunities to participate throughout the process. The country of origin must complete and share with the affected country EIA documentation containing information on the project, possible alternatives, environmental impacts and mitigation measures. The countries then enter into consultations on the documentation, for example, on alternatives and mitigation measures. At the end of the process, the decision makers of the country of origin consider the results of the assessment the consultations and public participation before taking a final decision on the project, say, to authorize the construction of the motorway, the power plant or the dam, and inform the affected country and its public of this decision and its reasons. After its start, the countries may also decide to monitor together the activity's impacts. A solid system for transboundary EIA helps countries safeguard the environment and green their economies. It can also help in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. UNECE assists countries in introducing and effectively implementing the Transboundary EIA procedure. UNECE serves as a secretariat to both the ESPO Convention and its Protocol on Strategic Environmental Assessment. The protocol intervenes earlier in decision-making and benefits the soundness of government plans programs and sometimes even policies and legislation. Due to a long-standing support from the European Union, in cooperation with UNECE, several countries in Eastern Europe and the Caucasus took legal and practical measures for applying the Convention and its protocol. Currently, policy dialogue and technical cooperation continues as part of the EU for Environment programme.